Assalamu alaikum. This is your brother Abdurrahman Murphy coming to you with a session of Roots Q&A. Today's question asks, is it permissible, is it okay for guys and girls to be friends with one another? Now, this question particularly comes from a brother, but I get this question a lot from sisters as well. The answer to this question has a few layers to it, so we're going to take a look at each layer with a different perspective. The first layer that we're going to look at is the layer of our faith, right? How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, as we've learned in our Sunday schools, from our parents, from our imams, from our sheikhs, from our teachers, We've learned that it is not permissible for a guy and a girl to be friends with one another. Um, this is because of temptation, because of potential for mistakes, especially in the current contemporary definition of what a friend is. This isn't really permissible, right? Now, taking a look from a practical perspective, after thinking about what it means to be a friend and being friends and all the scenarios and all the possibilities, I've come to the conclusion that there's going to be four. There are four possible scenarios. If a guy and a girl choose to be friends with one another, there are four possible scenarios that are going to happen, right? The first scenario is called just friends. Now this scenario is where the guy and the girl are friends and they remain just friends. And you know, they're friends for a long time, they help each other, they counsel each other, they communicate, they hang out, they're good friends, right? Eventually a time is going to come where both of them or one of them is going to have to get married. Now, for those of you who are married or for those of you who are planning on getting married or engaged or whatnot, you understand and you're going to be able to sympathize at this point that oftentimes spouses, most of the time actually, spouses are not comfortable with their spouse hanging out with friends of the opposite gender. So for example, my wife would not feel comfortable with me hanging out with girls and I wouldn't feel comfortable with my wife hanging out with a bunch of guys or talking to them or texting or whatnot. And this is just because of our comfort with each other, right? Now oftentimes in our culture, in American culture, this is seen as, oh, you don't have enough trust or, oh, you don't have confidence or you're paranoid. But I don't think it has anything to do with that. In fact, if you look at studies on relationships and psychologist studies on relationships, you'll see that it's actually very normal for the spouse to have a feeling of protectiveness and of kind of like this feeling of kind of, you know, belonging to the point where they don't want their spouse with people of the opposite gender because there is a potential for making a mistake and for infidelity or whatnot. Even if it's not physical infidelity, there may be emotional infidelity where the spouse actually ends up liking someone else more than they like their own spouse, right? So the guy likes another girl more than he likes his own wife and is attracted to her and emotionally attracted to her and whatnot. So the dangers are very, very real, right? And so this friendship, in this first scenario, just friends, this friendship ends up becoming broken because when you do get married or eventually when one of you or both of you will get married, what happens is that your spouse will not feel comfortable and you have to respect the comfort level of your spouse, right? It's part of marriage is respecting the comfort level and compromising for each other and showing your love for each other by being, making each other comfortable. Um, so the relationship, the friendship will end up being broken and this long-lasting friendship that you've had will be broken and it will be very, very painful, it will be heartbreaking, right? So situation number one ends up in pain. Situation number two out of the four is called the friend zone. And what happens here is when two people are friends, a guy and a girl, are friends for a while, and one of them decides, you know what, I like them more than a friend, I'm just going to tell them, and we're going to see what happens. So let's say the guy goes up to the girl and says, you know what, I really like you, I like you more than a friend. And the girl's like, oh, God, this is awkward. I only like you as a friend. You're like a brother to me and whatnot, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So the girl is not interested in being any more than a friend. The guy now is heartbroken, right, because he loves this girl. He really, really is attracted to her. She, All she wants to do is be friends with him. The girl now is also heartbroken because this is someone who she was really close to, probably, and now she's lost him as a friend because now he's that awkward guy who likes her more than a friend. So now it's really, really awkward, right? So if he, if he opens the door for her, She's going to be like, oh God, he's trying to like get me to like him. And, you know, if she hands him a, a handful of trash to throw away for her because she's busy, he's going to be like, oh my God, it's a sign. She likes me finally. So there's always, always this awkward scenario in this situation called the friend zone, right? Now, in the friend zone, what ends up happening is that this friendship you've had, for the person who likes the other person, it's painful because that person doesn't like you back. And for the person who's being liked more than they like the other person, it's painful because you just lost a really close friend. That relationship will never be the same. So two out of the four so far end up in pain, right? The third scenario, the third situation is called never meant to be. And what happens here is they'll say the two people are friends and they end up liking each other. But for some reason, whether it's geography, whether it's age, whether it's culture, they're not able to get married or be together, right? It's a really, really sad story. It's a really sad situation. It happens oftentimes, most of the time in movies, but it happens a lot. So these people are not able to be together and they have to get married to someone else. Now, their friendship led to them liking each other, right? The only reason why they were able to like each other so much is because of their friendship. So if they just made, if they just kind of like were patient and tried to like avoid each other and were modest around each other and weren't friends, then they wouldn't have had, had developed this, this attraction for one another 
that would have caused so much pain when they eventually were not able to be together. The fourth scenario, so it's three out of four now, are ending up in pain. The fourth scenario is that called happily ever after. Now, don't let the name get you excited because this happens very rarely. It's like 0.01%. I know that everyone right now who is in a friendship that they're attracted to someone is like, oh my god, I'm the 0.01%. But in reality, it may not happen with you, right? So you have to be very careful. 0.01%, what happens is that a friendship occurs, they attract, they're attracted to each other, and they end up getting married and they live happily ever after. Now, the reason why I would say don't bank on this is because it's very rare, it's very exceptional, it's not the rule, it's, it's not the norm, it's not the rule, it's the exception to the rule. Um, so if you look at this question analytically, you see that three out of the four scenarios end up in pain and heartbreak. Now, from a side perspective, from a spiritual perspective, as a youth director and as someone who's studying Islam, a common theme that you find throughout all of Islamic literature and Islamic teachings is that Islam is meant to preserve and protect our heart and our body and our mind and save it from pain. One of the goals of Islam is to save us from ever feeling pain, right? Whether it's physical pain, whether it's uh, you know emotional pain, whether it's intellectual pain, and that pain includes the pain of feeling heartbroken, right? Feel having a love not work out. And so when we look at this regulation and this guideline that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down and his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa taught us as well, it might seem at first like kind of crude and kind of weird, but if you look at it like we did in these four scenarios, if you take it to its logical conclusion, then what ends up happening is you realize that Islam is just trying to save us from pain and heartbreak. Yes, we have to be patient. Yes, we have to persevere. And no, it's not easy. I understand a lot of us are working in public places. We go to school at universities or high school or middle school. And even in Islamic school, Islamic school is no different, right? There is the same relationships that happen. But we have to be patient, have to persevere. And trust me, when you get married, if you've held out, if you've become patient with your friendship and not given too much of your heart away, even in friendship to the other gender, then when you get married to your spouse, you're gonna be able to give your whole entire complete heart to your spouse, and that friendship will be the best friendship you've ever had. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. Jazakallah khair for asking a question, and I look forward to getting more questions from you guys in the future. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.